I'm stuck. Does it get easier? Yes. It gets easier. Hey, what's up, family? Uh, this is Joette Lopez with another um, random rant. Um, you notice there's an actual verse um, displaying here. It's uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And uh, before I go in this uh, rant about church and church life and Christian values and, you know, overall growth, um, I just want to put out a disclaimer because sometimes I, I actually skip this part. Um, this past year has been a year where um, I've been getting deeper and deeper um, in my faith. Definitely not the same way as I used to be in terms of my like old school holy roller days where it's like uh, super uber um, Bible thumping Christian. Um, but I do feel like there's, some, there's something that's uh, uh, almost like a coming back to my roots. Uh, there's things that come to mind from time to time that I just um, feel uh, uh, a little almost compelled to share. Things come to me and I kind of want to chisel at it and see how I can frame it and uh, I just feel I, get, I, get, I feel led to share and just throw it out there. Disclaimer, this is not me trying to be some spiritual guru, but I do care about the church. I do think it's an a, a important um, uh, role it plays in social change and community development and support and the fabric of family life which has an ultimate impact on communities and health uh, so i do i am coming to terms and being giving myself permission to uh, speak on these things and this verse is something that you might see a lot from from christians um, they might have shirts or magnets or bumper stickers or whatever and this is one of the most quoted proverbs um, that, that, that is used in Christian circles and it's again this trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths or make your path straight in other translations I saw this verse today and it kind of just jolted me and it jolted me in a, in a negative way because it kind of hit me out of all my years being a pastor's kid and different facets and evolutions of my faith um, I I felt that this is one of the most dangerous verses um, of all time. Yeah, yeah, the most dangerous verse of, of, of all time in the entire Bible, possibly. If not the, the number one, probably top five in the terms of how it gets misunderstood, misused, and, you know, it misdirects people in their life even. Why would I believe that? Why would I um, think that? Um, well, the first reason is people tend to confuse this whole thing of like uh that one phrase which is probably the key part of the phrase so the, that verse is uh lean not on your own do not lean on your own understanding that's probably the part that gets the most um gets people in the most trouble when it comes to this verse because it's not saying you know don't use your own understanding it says do not lean on your own understanding do not develop a dependency on your own on your personal own understanding um and that that's a that's a subtle but super important um dis distinction you know um and i'm going to point out why just for a kind of a quick small example major life decisions and oftentimes people will take the route that might not do them any favors in a vague sense to to be like you know what i think i got to tell me to go with this route and they want to trust god in that and they they'll actually cut themselves short they might base a big life decision uh, by choosing the opposite of what makes common sense because again they're so afraid of leaning on their own understanding that they will put the most basic obvious things that should be like no brainers on the table for discussion. And every once in a while when that happens, they go with the thing that doesn't serve them or their families well. And so that's one big, that's just kind of like a big one um, on that one. In terms of ministry, you know, this could be as simple as um, not trying too hard when it comes to trying to uh, 
you know, grow your church members or have your, your visitors turn into actual full members. And, you know, you don't want to try too hard because if you try too hard, you're leaning on your own understanding and you're not trusting God with those things. Be careful. Don't do it on your own. Don't try to be clever. Don't try to new methods or different things you're you've got to trust in the lord with all your heart right and don't lean on your own understanding even to the point where it's like even with finance you know what are some things that could be saving the church money that can save uh save you um money on your website computers you buy there's actually programs uh, that you can google TechSoup, where if your church is a nonprofit you can get you know several licenses of windows and microsoft office for like stupid cheap like 10 bucks 15 bucks 30 bucks i know churches that are running bootleg versions of windows on them <laughs> you know and they're trying to <laughs> they're trying to be legit and worship in prayer you know and it's like nah man like there's there's ways to do this there, there's if you just seek out better understanding there's ways to do this and so no the churches might, might avoid all that together and say no we don't want to lean on our understanding we want to trust the we want to trust god in this it can be um really uh really dangerous so ultimately those those micro decisions end up having a macro impact on you know a large scale in your life and your in, the, in your church church relationships and organization so what ends up happening is you get in deeper crap because you made bad decisions because you're trying to outsource your logic and your brain that god gave you to this weird, vague, spiritual translation of common sense to this type of verse that kind of encapsulates it and you end up getting in deeper crap, which then makes this verse even more appealing. So you start to say, well, I don't understand why this is happening. I trusted God with my decision, but you know what? I'm in, I'm in deeper doo-doo. So I might as well just continue to trust in him and not lean on my own understanding and then, again, make poor decisions. I've heard of people who've been in accidents. They get um, some, not form of disability, but like they go, instead of going to a chiropractor um, and getting checked out and physical therapists, they feel bad because they're using like some other, the other person's insurance money that, and they say, oh, you know, I'm going to trust God with this and not not do anything um you know so things like that happen and so when it gets worse you tend to double down in this type of thinking i personally think and i say this with a with a with all sincerity and that kind of thinking is a load of crap it's garbage it's not just spiritually weak thinking it's mentally and emotionally weak i would dare to say that if this is a big part of how you think about your major decisions or um, important decisions in your day-to-day -day life, um, I think you're, you're, you might have to consider the fact that you might be emotionally or, or emotionally or spiritually stunted in your growth and development. This is why some Christians are just weird. This is why some Christians are just like off a little bit. It's because they're living in this, in this uh, I don't want to say la-la land, but they're, this, they're living in this weird place where they're not using the, the the domains that God has given them to live a full life, and they're they're like strapping them down, uh, chaining themselves to a pattern of thinking like this, where it's like you don't want to lean on your own, your own understanding, that it stunts them men mentally, emotionally, with their relationships, and even how they talk to people who are not Christian, even. I was I was one of those, you know, um, and, and that's that's um, there's something off about that that needs to be. And no one's talking. No one really talks about that. Um, and we need I think we need to start talking about that. Let me just kind of break this down too a little bit more. The reason why I think it's mentally weak and emotionally weak is that one mentally you're just being lazy, being lazy because you're outsourcing your responsibility to research things and look up things to God and hoping all that stuff is gonna work out. Newsflash, people. Spirituality can't always compensate for just practical knowledge that can actually help you in life and help you in your family. Just for an example.
You got to know the difference between whole life and term life insurance to take care of your family should something happen. Figure that stuff out. God, that's not in the Bible. There's just some things that are just not in the Bible that it's not going to help you out. in. You have to go outside of a spiritual framework to figure that stuff out. You can't Christianize everything, folks. You just can't. Okay? And we got to be cool with that. Um, same thing with emotionally chances are you this might this verse might be keeping you from realizing that all the crap that you got yourself into maybe it's because you suck at conflict resolution that you can't deal with conflict and you say things and do things you take cheap shots you know backhanded way do it in a, in a passive aggressive way you get in yourself into trouble and you wonder why and you just don't want to trust in god i lean on i acknowledge him in all my ways maybe you just need to learn how to deal like talk to your wife maybe you need counseling maybe you need marital counseling maybe you need help with raising your kids and how to talk to your kids maybe you need communication skills as a manager as a leader that's probably why you got problems at work maybe because you don't respect your manager or your, your direct su supervisor and you need to learn how to bring up proposals in a way that's like a win-win maybe you suck at proposals and so when you try to pitch somebody on something you just suck at it and it has nothing to do with you know god directing your paths and he maybe he doesn't want you to get that proposal approved maybe he doesn't want to get you that promotion maybe he doesn't and then you got to trust in god and you know no because as i'm going to share with you when you look at this whole this whole chapter in proverbs there's some things in here that directly go against that this kind of thinking and there's some economics to this that's pretty like you know kind of shocking that's the reason why i say this verse it could be um a guise a cover a, your your security blanket to cover the fact that you need to develop these areas and you need to face them head on and this whole thing of not leaning on your own understanding is tripping you up so to really um, bring things home, 10 things in this chapter that I want to share with you real quick and run through to show you that there is something to this thing about um, understanding, knowledge, wisdom, and its impact on your quality of life. And you can't make up for a lack of practical, secular knowledge with spiritual knowledge. You can't Christianize everything, folks. And um, 10 things real quick I want to go through to uh, share with you this. Um, Proverbs 3, I'm using, uh, I think, the New King James Version. And 10, 10 quick things. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. So there's like a, a soup high importance. Bind them around your neck. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. God and man. Not just God, but God and man. So there's a societal context here too that you have status you might have status in society as a result and that's not a bad thing then you have the actual verse that we're that i'm that's in question for me that i'm trying to bring out is that trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding again we're not saying don't use your understanding we're saying lean not on your own understanding meaning you might have to go other places to get it in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths do not be wise in your own eyes it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones uh the actual um literal word for flesh in this is actually navel so there's a, a there's a there's an image of uh your belly being full and so again the economics of you know trusting god and truth and seeking um uh, wisdom is is there it says honor the lord with your possessions with the first fruits of all your increase Again, this is another part. There's an upward mobility, economic mobility coming here that is not just trending upward, there's an overabundance. Look at the next verse. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Overflow with new wine. Um, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord or detest his correction. Um, there's gonna be some comfort. There's another thing too, when you try not to lean on your own understanding, you know, um, it could be very comfortable to just say, oh, I'm just going to trust God. I'm going to trust God with all this stuff. Forget my retirement plan. Forget my will. 
forget you know uh, what I can do to advance my career and look at forget looking at my industry to see what the next what's coming around the corner that maybe I should pick up a new, another certificate get another degree or get a new training in X Y and Z forget that I'm just gonna trust in him no he says do not despise chastening of the Lord nor detest his correction um, course correction is uncomfortable and when we're seeking out understanding, we have to face some things that might not be comfortable either. That's a little quick bonus there I want to throw in there. Um, it's not always it's not always fun doing this. Uh, happy is a man who finds wisdom. It means you got to seek it out. The man who gains understanding is not just automatically, spontaneously, miraculously just combusting, combusting inside of your soul. You have to gain it. Uh, her, pro, uh, her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain fi than fine gold. Now here's something I want to tease out real quick. Oftentimes in Christian circles, there is this demon uh, demonization of rich people, a rich folk, right? Um, and we, we get that from other verses that I won't get into now, but in this verse, you're seeing that it's not, it's not that he's saying gold, bad, wisdom, good. You know, there, again, I, sp I said this before in another video where it's like we tend to the image and culture and society is that the gurus are broken, poor. You know, they're wearing this like tarted garb and just really messed up and just they're a monk somewhere and they're just no material possessions. And the guru and the wisdom is in that, in that figure. It's embodied in that kind of imagery and that person. Whereas right here saying like it's not bad. It's just better. All right profits of silver and gain of fine gold is good it's just that wisdom is better wisdom is better and by the way it's just a byproduct that if you do this you seek truth and seek wisdom you know um you actually get overflowing of things listen this is the crazy part too the lord by wisdom founded the earth by understanding he established the heavens his knowledge by his knowledge the depths were broken up when we think of a creation Oftentimes, you might think of like, all right, God said it, an ex nihilo out of nothing, it appears. Um, and maybe it's this thing of like, we, we might even more loosely culturally associate God as this like hippie figure who is like an artist. And was like, yeah, let's make the wind, let's make the, the waters deep blue and that's cool. And the stars be far out, man. And it's like, no, but here it's like, God, it wasn't a. He's not painting the Lord as like a hippie who created the created the heavens and the earth and the clouds. Here it's like by understanding the Lord established the heavens. There's a more of an engineering language here. By His knowledge, the depths were broken up. You know, so there's an engineering element here, not just a creative artist type feel too. You know, there's a there's a there's an engineering element here, an intentional measurement measuring here. Uh, and that's that's um, that's I don't know, man. There's something there. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a theo I'm not a crazy expert theologian, but there's something there that that we need to kind of be open to. So at the towards the end of the chapter says, my son, keep sound wisdom and discretion, so they may be life to your soul and grace to your neck. This is the one that really stood out to me because. When we think of like life to our soul, we often think of the emotional elements of like what brings us life to our soul. You know, I came back from vacation not too long ago, saw some amazing views in the in the, in the, um, in, in the ocean and to the beaches, and um, man, it's beautiful. And I can see how that that can bring life. But there's also also something to like sound wisdom and discretion that also brings life to the soul. And we shouldn't just discount life to the soul as being only these emotional things that take our breath away emotionally. Sometimes wisdom and discretion and truth brings us life. And this is the things that, that come out from this. You'll sleep well. You'll, uh, you'll have no trouble when the wicked with the wicked when it comes. And the Lord will be your confidence because... You are valuing wisdom and truth, and you're not leaning on your own understanding. You're trusting God, but it's like a, it's you're, it's all encompassing. 
you're not outsourcing your understanding to God. You're just not leaning on your own and you're still taking um, the, 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 the wisdom, you're seeking wisdom around your life. We're living in times where we need the church to be awakened up and, and um, activated and we're falling short in many areas. And this is used as an excuse. This verse is used as an excuse. We can't try to figure this stuff out. We gotta trust God with X, Y, and Z. And I know at this time, there's a lot of like elders and church leaders who are, you know, we're probably retiring now and thinking about retiring and thinking about stepping down. You know, a lot of people who are from the old guard or the traditional, uh, church upbringing they're stepping down and i'm just i'm just throwing this out there for the for this new generation of church leaders to say listen there's some stuff that we are not even touching that is that is crippling us that we got to figure it out and this verse of just trusting god um and outsourcing our understanding that he gave us and not seeking wisdom not seeking all those things is um it's it's killing us folks we're we are at a point where the church is not just um, breaking down. It's on its deathbed. It's 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 crippled now. It's not just moving slow. It's crippling. If you don't know, there are more churches that are closing than there are opening up, and the mega churches are actually the only thing that's growing. And we all know that there's um, there's something to that. That's not really. Um, uh, all the way there when it comes to like community impact with the mega churches they often have a very a lot of trouble with with doing what 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 the smaller churches can do in terms of distributed impact in communities and so i just ask refrain from these crippling ideologies not all traditions are meant to be kept um rethink everything question everything and when you're thinking about taking your church or your, your life to the next level, um, lean not on your understanding. Prayerfully consider seeking wisdom from different domains and different areas and incorporating that in your, in, your, in your life. And in turn, I'm more than confident that he will direct your paths. Joy Lopez, if this is something that was interesting to you and you felt could not, someone needs to hear it, forward it to them and please share. And um, thanks for listening and I'll catch you guys on the next one. See you.